Hey y'all, welcome to the Wednesday evening edition of the Morning Watch. It is Wednesday, the 13th day of April, 2022. Uh, tonight we're going to be reading and studying together the 8th chapter of the book of Proverbs. We are marching through the book of Proverbs. Such a blessing uh, getting to study this book. What an amazing book that it is. Full of such amazing truths about wisdom, about life. Solomon, the author of it, is pouring his heart out to us, giving us so many amazing treasures in Scripture that we need. Um, so super thankful for this book. As you come in, let us know that you're here. Um, that's such an encouragement to me, knowing who's in the room. Hi, Kim. Good to see you. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to, like I said, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 8 tonight, but before we do that, we'll have a word of prayer, and those of you who have any kind of prayer requests or prayer needs, please put those into the chat so that we can be praying about those with you. Um, let's, let's pray, and then we'll get started. Dear Lord, thank you for this night. Thank you for this day, what this day has meant, all the things that you've done in our lives this, this day, um, your mercies and your grace and the opportunities today that you have given us to be your salt and light in this world. Lord, we want to be good stewards of your word. We pray as we study it tonight that you would give us the, the unction that we need to understand it through the power of your Holy Spirit living within us, that we would take your word, that your Holy Spirit would use it to make us more like your son, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so tonight we're in Proverbs chapter 8, but it's important. This is something that's occurred to me today. This is Holy Week, and so uh, this is the week set aside for us to remember certain events that happened in the life of Jesus as he moved closer and closer to the cross. We know that on this Friday, two days from now, we know that that is the day in the church that we call Good Friday. Uh, this is the day that we remember the crucifixion of Jesus, um, him being executed on a cross in the most horrific of ways. But on Wednesday, there, there have been things that have happened all week long um, in this historical account. We know that on Sunday, this past Sunday, we call Palm Sunday. That's the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem. I remember on the back of a donkey. Um, people singing Hosanna, laying down palm branches, the triumphant entry of the king into the capital city. What a beautiful picture that is. Well, on Wednesday, that's today, uh, a major event happened in Holy Week, and that was the betrayal of Jesus by one of his very own disciples, Judas. And you can read about this in, uh, in the Gospels, but one particular passage that I want to read tonight before we get into Proverbs chapter 8 comes out of Matthew chapter 26. Uh, remember, Judas was a part of the 12. He uh, walked with Jesus. He ate with Jesus. He was there to see so many of these amazing miracles that took place, but we know that Judas was lost, and Satan used him as an instrument to bring about... Um, the betrayal of our Lord. But keep in mind, all of this was a part of God's plan. In um, his, his sovereignty, this betrayal occurred in order to move toward Jesus' ultimate purpose, which was to die on the cross and reconcile um, a holy God against the sins of humanity. So in Matthew 26, it says here in verse 14, Then one of the twelve named Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, what are you willing to give me to betray him, Jesus, to you? And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him. From then on, he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. And we know that that did, in fact, happen. And we know that later on, and we can see that in um, the, actually the next chapter, uh, Matthew 27, verse 1, says, When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus to put him to death. <coughs> and they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pilate, the governor. Then when Judas, who betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, he felt remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver. 
saying, I have betrayed innocent blood. I've sinned. But they said, what is that to us? See to that yourself. And he ended up, he ended up taking his own life a little bit later on in that chapter. So keep in mind, this is a very this is a very thoughtful time of year for us as followers of Jesus because we are remembering we are remembering these significant events that happened leading up to the crucifixion and ultimately praise the Lord the resurrection of Christ um, huge huge events um, coming up toward Easter so Proverbs chapter 8 let's read this and unpack it a little bit together it says, does not wisdom call and understanding lift up her voice on top of the heights beside the way where the paths meet? She takes her stand, her being the symbol for wisdom. She takes her stand in all the places beside the gates, at the opening to the city, at the entrance of the door, she cries out. So there's this thing about wisdom here. She's everywhere. Okay. And so here we get to, for the remainder of this chapter, we get to hear wisdom speaking as a person, which is a beautiful picture, a beautiful metaphor of we get to understand the inner workings of wisdom, hearing Solomon write about what would wisdom say if she were a person. Okay, it says, to you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O naive ones, understand prudence, and O fools, understand wisdom. Listen, for I will speak noble things, and the opening of my lips will reveal right things. Wisdom does that. Wisdom gives us good instruction. And it says, For my mouth will utter truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. This is wisdom speaking. It says, All the utterances of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing crooked or perverted in them. They are all straightforward to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Now wisdom is not going to be perceived the same way by someone who does not know the Lord. Okay, So keep in mind, wisdom might even seem foreign. True godly wisdom might sound foreign or even offensive to those who do not know Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. And he says, Take my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choicest gold, for wisdom is better than jewels, and all desirable things cannot compare with her. Okay, what's, he, what's, what's Solomon saying here? What's wisdom saying here? The fact is that, and, and we do this, we are always in this materialistic culture and society that we live in. We're always one of the best and the newest and the brightest and the most high tech and the shiniest things. Here's what we're learning here. There's nothing, there's nothing that's more valuable in this world to a person than wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge of the Lord. Okay? And so it's important to understand that. The rest of the things are nothing. They have no value compared to what it means to truly be a person who's rooted in the wisdom of God. Okay? <clears throat> She, she continues to speak, wisdom does, in verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. What does it mean to be prudent? Smart. Wise. Doing the right things. He says, and I find knowledge and discretion. He says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way in the perverted tongue I hate. He says, wisdom hates those things. And it says, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power is mine. There's power in wisdom. He says in verse 15, by me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles all who judge rightly. I love those who love me, wisdom writes. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that amazing? I love those who love me, and those who diligently seek me will find me. If there's nothing else that we learn out of this chapter tonight, that is it. Let's read again. And those who diligently seek me will find me. If you seek after wisdom diligently, you will find it. 
And as believers, we know that the ultimate authority in our lives is the Word of God. And so there's no place where we can go if you want to diligently seek wisdom. There's no place better than the Word of God. And he says, Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even pure gold. Nothing is more valuable than her. And it says, And my yield better than choicest silver. Solomon writes, I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice to endow those who love me with wealth that I may fill their treasuries. And it's important to understand here that what Solomon is writing about, speaking as wisdom, is not necessarily financial wealth. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about the wealth that comes with knowing the heart of God. Okay? So it's important to understand that. Real wisdom brings wealth. Not financial wealth, but wealth in spirit. Wealth in hope. Wealth in joy. Okay? And it says, The Lord, okay, this is wisdom speaking still, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. From everlasting I was established, from the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills I was brought forth, while he, God, had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there. Wisdom has always existed. Why? Because God has always existed. Okay? When he, when he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when the springs of the deep became fixed, when he set the sea for its boundary, all of creation is testifying to the fact that wisdom has, is eternal because God is wise. He is wisdom. He is, the, he is the perfect picture of all things that is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. He is all of those things. Therefore, because God says, what do we know? The fear, the fear of the Lord is important for us to embrace as followers of Christ. And that is the beginning of wisdom. That's where it starts. If you want to know, where do I start in this? How do I start in pursuing the wisdom of God? Remember, diligently seek me, you will find me, wisdom says. Well, you do it by getting in Scripture. You do it by listening to good preaching. You do it by praying and spending time with the Lord, by serving Him, by being a part of the local church. Okay? That's how you get to know him. And when you get to know him and seek after him, you will be reverentially afraid of him, of the fear of the Lord. We, we diminish that, but when you come into contact with God, when you have a genuine encounter with him, there is no way that you can exist in that place. All of your own personal pride and ego and arrogance and uh, uh, whatever haughtiness goes away because the only response that you can have in the presence of the Creator is humility. Remember when John encountered, uh, when John encountered the angel in the Book of Revelation, he said the Bible says that he he got down, he he assumed the position of a dead man, flat on his face, because there was no place he could go that was any lower than that. Okay. Remember Moses at the burning bush took his sandals off because the ground on which he was standing was holy ground. He created the universe with, his, with, with, with words. Let there be light and there was light. That is the same God who sent his only son to die on the cross for you and for me. That if we would just trust in him, repent of our sins, turn away from our sins, and turn to him and surrender our hearts to him, saying, Lord, I have sinned against you. I'm tired of living life my own way. Will you please, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. And if you sincerely mean that, 
if you sincerely mean that you're tired of living on your own, you want to surrender to the one who made you and knows you better than anyone else does, then you will be saved. How do I know that? The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you don't know him tonight, you need to know him. He loves you. He's looking for you. He's pursuing you. Quit running away from him because you cannot outrun him. You cannot outrun the grace of God. You, you, might be saying, you might be sitting here thinking, you don't know what I've done. Well, I know that the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect because we're people. But we serve a God is perfect who wants you to come to him just as you are with all of your imperfections, with all of your all of your failures and all of your uh, all of your indiscretions and insecurities and anxieties and your past he wants you to come to him just as you are and call out to him and he will save you it's promised in the bible so if you want wisdom that's where you start is you got to know him you got to know him okay <clears throat> and he says when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him as a master workman. Wisdom was right there with God as he was creating the universe. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and having delight in the sons of men. Now therefore, O sons, and we're out of time. Now therefore, O sons, listen to me, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Okay? You want to be blessed? Follow the truth. Live a life that is aligned with the wisdom of God. And it says, heed instruction and be wise. Heed instruction. Listen to it. Don't be that person who you can't be taught anything new. Because Jesus, when you were created, God put within you a curiosity. A yearning for something bigger than yourself. Surrender to him. And he says here, do not neglect it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at my doorposts. Listen to this. Listen to this. Look at verse 35. For he who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me injures himself. All those who hate me love death. All right, this is wisdom speaking. This is the way we should live our lives. This is what gives us as believers, this is what seeking after the wisdom of God, seeking after the face of God, is why you were created to begin with, to give glory to the one who created you. People are, that old country western song, looking for love in all the wrong places. People are looking for purpose in all the wrong places. The only place to truly find purpose in this world is in a life that is defined by a surrendering and a life that is marked, that is different, that is aligned with God. That is the life that God has called you to. A life that is different that is aligned with him. The things that he loves, we love. The things that he hates, we hate. Having the mind of Christ. The Bible says in the book of Galatians, for I have been crucified with Christ. We die daily to ourselves. When you get saved, yeah, you're saved at that moment. You can never be any more or less saved than you are right then. But we still deal with sin as believers. But you know, when God the righteous, holy God. When he looks at us, if you know Christ, he no longer sees you the same way. He sees you through the lens of the blood of his son that was shed for you on Calvary. But you know what? The great news of Easter is not the crucifixion. That's a horrible scene. The majesty of Easter is the resurrection. Because just the crucifixion by itself, we'd have no reason to be here tonight studying the Word of God. None. It'd all be a joke. 
But you know what? He rose again after three days. And you know, over 500 people saw him after the resurrection. 500 people. He didn't keep his presence a secret. But do you know where he went next? He ascended to heaven. And he told them before he left to go and to make all, go into all the, all the world and make disciples. That's what he told me and you to do. And that is our job. Be salt and light in this world. Giving everybody that we come in contact with the message of truth and mercy and grace and love that comes from our knowledge of who he is because he has saved us. What does that old song say? You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. No one can argue with your testimony. No one. Because it changed you. Remember Paul, when he was Saul? He held the coat of the men while they were stoning Stephen. God found him on the road to Damascus, struck him down, changed him from the inside out. He changed his name to Paul, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, and when he walked into the temple after that, the Bible says that people scattered because they were afraid because his mission in life was to kill Christians. But now he's different. And the Bible says he looked at him and said, Whoa, I'm not who you think I am. I've been changed. And you know what? The same God who saved Paul, if you've given your heart to Jesus, is the same one that saved you. And you think, oh, wait a minute, my salvation was not as dramatic as Paul's. I beg to differ. If you've given your heart to Christ, your salvation was just as radical, just as transformational, just as mind-blowing as Paul's was. And my question tonight is, if you're sitting here and, you're, and somebody shared this video, and I hope you do, if you're watching this tonight and you've been blessed by these crazy videos, of these Bible studies, that you'll share them. Share them with your friends on Facebook. Because here's the thing. This whole two years that we've been doing this, yeah, two years, will be worth every minute we've spent if one person, one person who is out there stumbles across this video and says, I want to know more about Jesus. It'll be worth it. And if you don't find any value in the videos, don't share it. Don't do it. But if you find like it's if you if you feel like it's been a blessing to you, and you feel like you know somebody that might benefit from hearing the word of God taught in a very imperfect way, I'm like the worst teacher in the world. But if somebody might benefit from it, share it. Share it. If you're watching this and you're thinking, I want to know more, send me a private message, Amon Couch on Facebook. I would love to talk to you more. All right. Well, let's see who's joined us since we started, and we'll we'll adjourn here. Hi, Diane. Good to see you, Shirley. Absolutely, I'm thankful that uh, that Butch is okay, and yes, we'll be praying for David. All right. I love you all so much. Today is a day of salvation. If you do not know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He is calling out to you. Just respond. Respond to that calling. It's not by accident. Surrender your heart to him and say, I'm done. I'm done running. I'm done fighting. I'm done trying to outrun the Lord because you can't outrun him. You can't come to him just as you are and he will accept you just as you are. And he will change you from the inside out into the person that he created you to be. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this for this day, for this night you've given us, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you would that you would just we're just throwing this out, this video, throwing it out into the world. And Lord, through your divine sovereignty, Lord, if there's one person who might come upon this, Lord, we'll give you all the credit because you're the one who does every you're you're the one who saves people. It's not us. You just called us to be obedient. Lord, I just pray that that would happen. Lord, we love you. We believe in miracles. Lord, be with David Hampton. Thank you, Lord, for Butch and the good uh, praise report, Lord, from his, from his procedure. We love you with all of our hearts. And we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. I will see you in about, 
Good night. What about 11 hours? And we're going to do Proverbs chapter 9. We'll do, I'll see you in the morning at 7 a.m. And uh, we will talk to you very soon. Love you all. Have a good night.